Hey y'all, it's your girl Gemini Jazz and we are back with another video and today we are going to be discussing Chiron through all 12 zodiac signs, okay? So first and foremost, before we dive into all of this good stuff about Chiron, because, you know, we have lots of things to discuss when it comes to Chiron. It's such a deep and mysterious um, energy to kind of navigate, okay? But before we get into all of that, I'd just like to say thank you for being here. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are returning, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I hope things have been going well on your end and all that good stuff. Um, and I don't have any announcements outside of what I always, you know, kind of suggest. But if you are looking to dive more into what we're going to talk about in this video and get readings or more insight individually on your chart, hit the description box below because I have all of my contact information, my website, my social platforms, so on and so forth. And you can access me and all of my services, including my membership, um, The Celestial City, that is only $33.33 per month, as well as um, the readings that I have available at this time. Okay, so now let's dive into um, this video about Chiron in the signs. So Chiron, what is Chiron, right? Chiron is an asteroid and we all know about that, right? It's an asteroid, it's not a planet. And it's often referred to as the wounded healer, right? Chiron is connected to our deepest wounds, right? The knowledge and also the healing that comes along with that. So, you know, the, the self healers, we all have that ability to heal ourselves. We all have the ability to know what these wounds and whatnot are stemming from. We just have to tap in. So Chiron is utilized in astrology to show us where our emotional baggage is, so to speak. So the lesson that Chiron um, involves basic or evolves basically is the, the ways that we recognize and deal with our deepest wounds, right? Or sometimes how we don't deal with our deepest wounds. And a lot of that comes from our earliest encounters with life, with people, um, you know, our relating experiences, right? Memories and things that are... Um, taught to be hidden, right? Because they are um, basically deemed unpleasant or not good or harmful or painful. And so therefore they must then be unacceptable. And so because of these energies, this is where um, emotions like guilt and shame, abandonment, low self-esteem, um, low self-worth, fears about being rejected, um, unworthiness, all of these things come into play because of how society deems certain emotions and certain encounters with life to be unacceptable. Now, wherever Chiron falls in our birth chart, um, preferably by sign, right? First and foremost, you got to recognize the sign, which is why this video is here. So recognize what sign Chiron is. And then you take into account the house placement. Where is Chiron in your house? Like with the first house, second house, eighth house, wherever, because then that gives it a different um, flavor to what's happening with Chiron being in just say Aries or Chiron in uh, Virgo, so on and so forth. So once you take into account the sign, as well as the house placement, then you have to pay attention to the aspects that it forms with other planets and, and other houses and whatnot in your chart. So you can recognize by seeing all these things, the area in which we feel vulnerable or uh, quote unquote weak or um, these things that might really evoke feelings of low self-esteem and low self-worth that we were previously speaking about. Okay, so Chiron's placement, um, in turn, what it does is it shines a light on our past hurts, our wounds, um, things, you know, even such as like childhood trauma, um, all of those experiences, those ill experiences, you know, from previous, you know, things, even maybe even past life type of situations, depending on where it falls in your chart, right? So, this is what we like to call emotional baggage, right? So this is um, what it's doing is shining a light, so to speak, or revealing, um, you know, how uh, our repeated interactions with others or with the world, <clears throat> excuse me, with the world, so to speak, um, will provoke um, our insecurities 
and maybe even, you know, what we deem as being failures. So there's also an option, right? This is where that quote unquote free will comes in. Because although it's revealing it, we still have to make a choice to see it, right? So that's kind of where that that line goes in between that Chiron energy. Chiron's purpose is to make us realize that our weak spots are not um, feelings that we can erase or disregard rather than they are something that needs to be embraced. They cannot necessarily be denied, right? We cannot just say... Um, you know, this this terrible thing that I feel about myself needs to be ignored because it only amplifies more of that emotion, more of that feeling, right? So let's think of it this way. Take peekaboo, the game peekaboo, for example. Just because you're covering your eyes, it does not mean the person or the thing on the other side of your hand does not exist. You're simply choosing not to see it. So that's the way that we can see Chiron. Chiron gives us an opportunity to recognize that there's something still on the other side of what we can't see. We have to literally just make the choice to pull our hands down and say, I see this for what this is. Now, what are we going to do about it? Facing your fears, facing those insecurities and those feelings of guilt and shame and whatnot. Okay, so if we forget the experience, right, this is how we think. If we forget the experience um, itself, then our bodies and minds um, will forget it also. No, that's not the truth, right? Our bodies and minds will still contain that feeling, right, as a sensory or a trace memory. And if you have not read the, bi uh, the, the book, The Body Holds the Number, it goes into more detail about this on a psychological aspect of things, okay? So now how do we use Chiron for our growth and our gain, right? It's so all these feelings of shame and guilt and all these low vibrational emotions that we're speaking about, right? But how can we in turn transmute that energy and turn it into, turn the pain into purpose, right? And making that purpose or making that all of that lucrative for us and even pleasurable, right? So Chiron's cycle of reoccurrence, basically um, Chiron, what it does in turn, it creates these situations, right? In life, these circumstances in life that's going to trigger us. But in turn, the reward comes from Chiron when we learn to integrate our painful experiences, allowing these triggers to invite us to navigate why we're being triggered, where this is stemming from, how can we grow through this, right? And integrate these experiences as a part of our identities, right? So this is turning that pain into purpose and also pleasure, right? So, but keep in mind that as long as we continue to view these imperfections that need to be removed or purged from us, then we'll continue to see them as flaws in others as well as ourselves, right? Because it's all about mirroring. Every situation and every person in our life is mirroring some aspect of ourselves, right? So, this is going to continue to impact our capacity for relationships and mutual understanding of others if we continue to see Chiron or continue to see our wounds or these feelings that we have, our insecurities as flaws, so to speak, okay, instead of using them to empower us to actually help heal other people. So now, without further ado, let's start navigating Chiron through the signs. Hey y'all, so we're going to navigate Chiron in Pisces. So people with this placement typically have a deep and vivid uh, relationship with dreams and the spiritual world, right? Um, and sometimes this can create a sense of fear. Um, this can also um, present like a self-sacrificing energy really to on a tremendous level um, within these people to where it can elicit like uh, guilt, inner feelings of guilt, um, if they are not in a space of sacrificing themselves, right? Um, also, these are the the healers of our world, right? Of course, there are many healers in, in different, you know, ways, but these people can have a great sense of healing, but it requires for them to um, face their inner demons, face what is hidden, face their shadows. So you'll see these people having have gone down lots of shadow work. There might have been even some trauma regarding their um, their spirituality, uh, maybe even their sexuality as well, things of that nature since Pisces rules bed pleasures. Um, also, 
you'll see that these people heal by diving into the spiritual work, right? So doing that shadow work and recognizing that also maybe even some things going on psychologically, they may have a lineage of, you know, history with psychological um, or mental health challenges. Um, also, um, you'll see that they turn out to end up doing things in the in the the spiritual world as far as like their work. Also, you'll see these people turn out to be, um, you know, death doulas or people who work, you know, behind the scenes in asylums, you know, working in mental health institutions or in hospitals, helping people transition on. Um, they are definitely in the health industry, right? Because they want to heal people, whether it's mentally, emotionally, or physically, because they have a relationship with what it means to be ill, whether it's, you know, on any kind of level, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, however. So the Chiron and Pisces wound is associated with the relationship with the divine, right? With the things that we can't see, right? And that might manifest in several different ways. And so this could be a loss of faith or trust in the divine in, um, you know, source, the most high, you know, spirit, however you identify, um, you know, also maybe even having some type of loss in truth, not understanding what the truth is, um, not knowing what is true, you know, not being able to um, differentiate between illusion and reality, you know, the dream world and things of that nature. But you'll also see that these people have a strong uh, ability to uh, do, you know, out of, body, out of body experiences, um, you know, whether they are astral projecting or lucid dreaming, these people have a strong sense of being able to do this. Um, also, they have that deep sense of always being betrayed or victimized as well. So either they are a victim or they are being betrayed or they on the other end of this are doing this because that Chiron and Pisces is manifested in that way. Also, they have a fear of being hurt um, because life has done that, right? Life has put them through these tests and through these situations to where they always end up in hurtful situations. Um, and it's building um, the, the, the power that they have to help people heal because of that wound or because of the pain and shame and whatnot. Also, um, you know, they might even see that the universe is unfair. That's how they can see unjust, maybe even like merciless, like they have just no mercy. They have like the worst life ever. And it's just a really strong victim mentality. Also, these people have a tendency to develop a hard shell. Um, they can become cynical, very pragmatic um, in certain things, just very even dogmatic in their approach. They're not open, right? Which is the opposite of the Pisces energy. So they can tap into that very rigid um, in their approach, very, you know, hypercritical, hyper practical, you know, so it's more so into that Virgo energy instead of the Piscean energy where you're supposed to be open and oneness and, you know, compassionate and allowing things to be as they are the ebb and flow of it, right? So um, this can in turn bring in a fear of opening up to others, you know, a lack of vulnerability, suspicion, lack of trust in others, um, but really being highly sensitive. So, but because that Neptune Pisces energy is so strong, they can't differentiate between when someone's deceiving them and what's reality, right? When someone is being genuine because they have a tendency of seeing things through rose colored lenses and that always have gotten them into some type of trouble or, down the path they don't really want to go down. So um, they also tend to um, identify with lost causes. Uh, the, they are seen as the underdogs. And they always, if they're not seen as that, then they are the ones always rescuing others, sacrificing themselves, right? There is a tendency to have... Um, a blocked need for oneness that might come up through um, being gullible, right? You know, being overly, you know, or being sensible, right? But also being like kind of gullible in their approach and being uh, green is what we used to call it. Um, you know, sentimental to the point of where it's detrimental, okay? Um, now also, you know, the healing journey for Chiron and Pisces placements involves the search for oneness in the divine, right? And so once they have that search and they begin that search, um, these people need to have some type of spiritual connection, a spiritual routine, a spiritual life. And once they... <clears throat> tap into that and adapt that way of being, the gift is integrated into having a divine life daily, right? You know, connecting with spirit, connecting with, you know, God, however they identify, you know, having a spiritual um, routine, 
Okay. And so through confronting the unfairness in their lives, they begin to see the larger pattern here at work and get to see the bigger picture, right? It's kind of like tapping into the Jupiter side of Pisces. And through, um, through that, you know, over time, they may come to see that perhaps, you know, it's all part of the divine plan. And, uh, you know, they've gone through the adversities because they are here to help people get through what they're going through, you know, because they've already been through it. And that there's always a deeper reason why things work out the way they do, right? And so everything is in um, our lives for a reason. They begin to experience that and see that and also be able to teach and show that to others. People with displacement, um, they can start to see the plan um, and build a greater trust in life, a greater trust in divine, you know, source God, you know, and also have a renewed sense of faith as well. So Chiron and Pisces are highly imaginative and romantic, of course, because it's Pisces and they can pursue um, things with an unshakable faith once they tap into it. Right. And they can offer their gifts of imagination and spiritual connection. And, um, you know, because Pisces rules, you know, cinema and illusions. So it's like makeup and art and um, all the, you know, painting and all the, the wonderful things of artistry. It rules all of that. And they'll be able to share that. So they might even find healing in the arts as well. And being able to make really profound and healing like cinema or, you know, photographs, maybe, you know, things of that nature. And it helps heal other people. Um, also, um, you know, having that profound spiritual connection, you know, is good for, for everyone involved, right? And they be, they're able to put their um, individuality in service to others. So using their individual gifts to help others. Um, people, like I said before, with displacement are natural healers because they feel a deep compassion for all things and all beings. And that helps them with compassion, you know, because it's that unconditional love that Pisces possess. And when you reconnect with the divine that is on the inside, right, the Pisces, the Chiron and Pisces placement, they have to reconnect on the inside, the divine power within them. Um, they can return to love. They can return to oneness, balance, wholeness. Um, they can understand all of these aspects are here and all of these things already lie within them and they are here to provide that gift to the world in service to others, but with boundaries, right? So a lot of people with this placement don't typically have strong or healthy boundaries. So that is something that they have to develop as well. Okay, so that is all that I have for Chiron and Pisces. I hope this has been helpful and beneficial. Um, if you are looking to navigate your Chiron placement or get a reading, hit the description box below and navigate to my website where you can purchase a reading, the Chiron Reiki infused candles and join the membership for $33 a month. All right, make sure you like, share and subscribe. I will see you.